James, what's your background? What, are you farming or what are you doing? Well, we're part-time farmers in Colverton, which has been home for forever, really. Um, so we've got some stud Corridale sheep there, and I work mostly as a farm environment consultant and do some writing for Countrywide magazine. So Colverton's become dairying very much, isn't it? It has. We've certainly got the last Corridales in, in Colverton, no doubt about that. Um, or on the basin anyway, last stud. But we have, yeah, the, the dairying thing's helped us stay there too in a way. The farm, family farm's been leased for a long time for dairy support. Um, without that industry there, we'd probably be struggling to stay there, to be honest, the way returns have been for the last 10 years or so. So it's meant there's a farm sitting there still in the family and an opportunity if, if we can make it work for the next generation. Coraldales, they're an amazing breed, especially in a drought. Yeah, it's interesting. There's um, a lot of people who would generally be considered critics of the breed have had to admit that this year has been a year for Corries. Um, a bit of a shame that it takes a year like this to, to show some benefits of the breed, but they've certainly been, been good for people who have got them at the moment, as, as opposed to something with a, a huge appetite. And of course mid-micron it was written off from the Kinsey report is holding its own now. Well, yeah, certainly. I mean, it's still hard to compare a um, you know, a couple of extra dollars a kilo to, to an extra lamb, but if we can lift lambing percentage as well, which a lot of the remaining breeders have, and we can get a good premium premium for wool through smart wool contracts or something like that, because we are finding the breed up, then I think there's a competitive option there for some people. Yeah. Now the contest, why would you enter it? Uh, something we entered, first time we entered it was actually at, at high school. We were um, just 18 and, and it got us... Um, a reasonably interesting test for a Saturday and a day out of the boarding hostel. Um, but after that, a few years off before we got the Young Farmers Club going at home again in Hurunui. And um, ever since then, we've, we've all encouraged each other to have a go, um, either there or in Wymac, depending who's hosting the North Canterbury one that year. And it's just something, every time I've done it, I've learned something. Um, it's a really good way of testing ourselves. Usually pretty stressful, and certainly stressful to have got to this level, but um, always rewarding by the end of it. James, the dairy industry has taken a hiding. What has to happen to, to get it out of the blues? Yeah, the dairying one's an, an interesting question at the moment. Um, I think a lot of people possibly plan for, for the rainy day, and we're seeing that at the moment with the drought on all farm types. Um, people who have farmed through a, a difficult time before or who have farmed for when the difficult time might happen will come through the other side. I mean, farmers are incredibly resilient. Um, that's not specific to any particular sector, that's the whole group. You have to be and you have to enjoy what you're doing to keep going and, and I think anyone that's facing it at the moment, either through difficult returns, which is not just um, confined to dairying, or through climatic conditions, which are tough for everyone, anyone that can get through that is going to be stronger at the other end.